Hello. About nine months ago, I saw this TED Talk video showing some cool things that quadcopters could do. And if you had asked me at the time what a quadcopter was, I could probably have told you, but I didn't know all that much about them. But as I found myself sitting there watching this video about three or four times in a row, I knew that I was going to have to get my hands on one and try it for myself. So I got one of these little micro helis and practiced flying that around indoors. But the problem with this hobby is that no matter what you have, you always seem to want something else, I think. So it wasn't long before I upgraded to something a little larger. And this time I got all the parts together and built this one myself. There was nothing particularly special about this build, except for the fact that around about the same time I had become interested in Arduino. So I decided to use an Arduino Pro Mini with a radio module to do the radio link for this quadcopter. And it worked pretty well. But of course it wasn't long before I wanted to upgrade it, so I got some new parts, new motors and so on. And my old parts ended up just sitting around doing nothing. Meanwhile, people had been asking me about the Arduino radio link that I'd made. So I figured I'd take some of my old parts and put them to use in another quadcopter. And this time I would explain the steps that I went through to make it. Now, this being only the second quadcopter I've ever built, I'm not much of an expert on the subject, but fortunately it's not too difficult. If you have a look around on YouTube, you will see a lot of videos explaining how to build a quadcopter or a hexacopter and such. Um, and I don't really have much more to offer than they do in, in terms of the physical building of the frame and such. But I thought what I'd do is explain in detail all of the Arduino parts that I did, because that is a little bit unique to what I've done so far, I think. I also noticed in a lot of those other YouTube videos that in the comments, people are asking how much stuff was or where did you get it and so on. So I thought what I would do for this build is list up everything that I got and how much it was and where I got it from so that people could um, have that information available. I'll put a link in the description to this Google Doc spreadsheet. Uh, you will not be able to edit this sheet, but if you come up here and do make a copy, I think you probably need a Google account to make a copy. But if you do that, then you can make a copy of this and edit it yourself. So you can uh, say if you have these things here, you can just delete that and it will automatically update the total at the bottom to see how much it's going to cost you for what you don't have. So the theme for this build is going to be cheap ass, in that all of the pieces that I've used are basically the bare minimum that you can use to get this done. Um, to the point where some of them I would not actually recommend that this is a, a good thing, but it's adequate and I've used it and it seems to work so far. So um, to keep costs down, that's the kind of things that I've put into this list. Now, you may be looking at that total there thinking, hmm, just under $200 is not really that cheap. But keep in mind that we're also making the transmitter as well. And this list also includes the charger and the battery and even the mains adapter for the charger and little bits and pieces like Velcro and zip ties and stuff as well. So this list and this build, I'm kind of aiming it at people who are starting with nothing. And that's why this list includes everything that you will need. Originally, the total for this build came to about $160, which was why I first decided to call it the cheap ass build. But unfortunately, I had a lot of trouble with the cheap and nasty joysticks that I was trying to use. They were just not good enough for this purpose. So I decided to bite the bullet and get some that were about 10 times more expensive, which was kind of disappointing from the standpoint of being a cheap ass. But the transmitter is one thing that you can reuse across multiple different quadcopters or boats or cars or whatever. So it's not so bad if you put a bit of money into that and get some quality joysticks that you're going to enjoy using. And you also may prevent an expensive crash by just being able to control things better. That's one way of putting some positive spin on it, isn't it? You may notice that there are a couple of cells left empty in the spreadsheet. That's for you to enter the estimated cost of the frame that you want to make or buy. Uh, I managed to make both the quadcopter and the transmitter box from this 30 centimeter square plywood and a one meter piece of balsa. So you're probably getting the picture by now that this series of videos is aimed at the do-it-yourselfer type who 
has some familiarity with Arduino already. Uh, you will have to do some soldering. You will have to do a tiny little bit of coding. And I'm not going to teach you any Arduino setup. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to solder things. I'm not going to teach you how to look after your LiPo batteries, although you will have to know how to do that. Be careful with those. Uh, and I'm not going to teach you how to fly radio-controlled helicopters. So all of those things uh, you can find in a myriad of other videos on YouTube. What I will look at in detail, though, are the Arduino sketches that I've used on the transmitter and the receiver to do the radio control link. And I'll also go over the basics of setting up a typical multi-Wii flight controller. But first things first, though, in this video I just wanted to give you an overview of what the series was going to be about and what kind of quadcopter we are going to build. So, how big is this thing going to be? Well, the exact size is up to you, but for the motors that we're using, you'll probably find that you need to make it about 25 to 30 centimeters in size. And when we say size, we mean from one diagonal to the other. Or another way of thinking about it is, if you drew a circle of that diameter, all of the four motors would be on that circle. Okay, how about range? Well, I've tested these radio modules up to about 400 meters or so, and they seem to give pretty good connection at that distance. However, with the quadcopter, I have only flown it up to maybe 100, 120 meters or so away from me, mainly because it just gets too small to see at that distance. If you're flying FPV or if you have a larger quadcopter that you can still see that far away, that wouldn't be a problem. However, I've had a few issues with the radio connection um, so I don't think I would feel too confident to say much more than about 150 meters or so to be safe but I mean come on these modules they only cost six or seven dollars together for the both of them so that's not too bad when you consider the price the next important question would be flight time and you can see here a list of some times I got with those batteries uh, this, of course, depends on how much your frame weighs. My frame weighs about 258 grams without the battery. How about performance? Well, this comes down to a combination of how the flight controller is set up and the frame design that you use. I hear that most people don't need to change the flight controller settings too much, and that was the case with me too. I didn't really change too much. So, will it be stable? Hopefully. Uh, you can get nice stability like this. Will it be fast? Well, once again, this depends on your frame design. My frame turned out to be very light and kind of chunky, so it doesn't cut through the air very well, and as you can see, my one is not very fast. Maybe you can do better. Will it be able to carry a Mobius camera? I would be very surprised if it couldn't. The Mobius camera only weighs about 39 grams, so it should be no problem at all. Will it be able to carry a GoPro camera? Well, a GoPro weighs almost twice as much as a Mobius, so the weight of your frame is going to start to be quite important here, and you'll find that you'll lose some flight time as the weight goes up. But uh, I don't think you could put anything much heavier than a GoPro on there. And, for example, a gimbal. Uh, I don't think you could really mount much of a gimbal on there, unfortunately. Will you get nice, smooth footage from your camera? Uh, no, probably not. You should be able to eliminate the jello effect, but generally quads of this size are not really a good platform for filming from. Well, that should cover the main points. So as I mentioned before, this is very much a DIY kind of project. It's not something that you can just quickly plug and play and get running. And I should also mention that this is probably not a good project to be starting out with if you don't have any experience in flying quadcopters. What I recommend you do in that case is pick up one of those little tiny micro quads and get used to flying that first. And as a bonus, you can hack into the transmitter of that once you're done with it and repurpose it for the larger quad project. So anyway, that's going to do it for this intro video. I've recorded all the footage of the build, but I have not edited anything yet. So I'll put up the next video, each one, as I get done with the editing. And I also had a problem with the joysticks that I was trying to use, as I mentioned earlier. So the video that you see there with me flying it so far was actually done with another transmitter. So I haven't quite finished making the 
cheap ass uh, wooden box transmitter just yet. So I may have to do a little bit more filming for that one. For now, I'll just close out this video with a nice little bit of flight that I recorded the other day to pique your interest. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.